Breaking news here on CBS Sports HQ. What's that, y'all? I can't hear you. That's right. Caitlin Clark just became the number one draft pick overall for the Indiana Fever. And I know they are going crazy over there in the Midwest as they have their lady who is expected to be an incredible player when it's all said and done. Here is the projected starting five now for the Fever. Caitlin, Kelsey Mitchell, at the two, then you got Lexi Hull, who can shoot from outside off and plays great defense. Then in the front court, Melissa Smith and Aaliyah Boston holding it down as the two bigs. And time now to welcome in Iowa native and CBS Sports HQ anchor Chris Hassel. And Chris, first off, what's your reaction to seeing Caitlin Clark <laughs> go number one overall after it was pretty much a formality uh, leading up to it? Yeah, big surprise, right? Um, I, I will say, and, and I'm I'm in a boat that a lot of my fellow Iowans are in. A, a lot of people across the country. This is the first time we've ever watched the WNBA draft, right? I mean, th there, there are so many new eyeballs that are going to be coming to the WNBA because of stars like Caitlin Clark and others. This is the best WNBA draft class I, th I think we've ever seen. But we're seeing what kind of an impact already that Caitlin Clark can make. There's 17,000 tickets that were scanned in Indianapolis for, for the draft watch party. I thought it was telling when the, the broadcast came on and they interviewed Caitlin Clark right away. They, they asked her about how her game would translate into the WNBA. And the first thing she said was not the first thing that we think about when we think Caitlin Clark. Those logo threes those deep shots yeah she she's she's great at those she has more range than anybody we've seen but her passing is is going to be the difference maker at this next level i've never seen i've seen shooters that are as good as caitlin i've never seen a better passer than caitlin clark i think she's more magic johnson than steph curry and i, I think a lot of people will realize that when they start watching her in the WNBA. you think she's better than uh sue bird too and Chelsea Grant, I'll just say, I, hey, I, I'm not going to go that far yet. I mean, it, look, I, I think Caitlin Clark is is one of the best college basketball players you've ever seen. We know she has a lot to prove when it comes to that next level because everybody is going to be out to get her and out to show her that, hey, Rook, you know, we've seen the the WNBA commercial campaign. Right. They want to teach these these hot young rookies a lesson. Yeah. They're coming in with huge stars around them. Yes, they're coming in with all of this flair, and we've seen it in the outfits tonight. But we know that these veterans are going to have something special for the rookies. There's no doubt about that. Oh, and that's what we love about sports, that competitive fire. Like, mm -hmm. okay, you were great in college. Come to WNBA, mm -hmm. it's going to be a different story going to start. Now, we also have to talk, Chris, about the Fever team that hasn't made the playoffs since 2016 when the great Tamika Catchings was still playing for them. So what are your expectations for them understanding that they have some great pieces in Leah Boston, Melissa Smith, uh, but they're not actually going or they're they're not exactly going to be a juggernaut from day one. I, I think the, the biggest factor is um, this team wasn't the worst in the league last season. Like they lucked into this number one pick in back-to-back -back years so it's not like they're completely rebuilding like a couple of these teams in the lottery are I, I would expect this team to absolutely make the playoffs because Caitlin Clark has never had a player underneath the basket like she's going to have this season I mentioned the passing Aaliyah Boston is going to benefit she's already a great player rookie of the year she is going to benefit most by having Caitlin Clark on this team, setting her up with passes inside. I think those two are going to be an incredible one-two punch. And I, I know the pressure is going to be there. I'm not saying they're going to be, you know, they're going to win a WNBA championship in year one. I, but I got to believe that the, the, the floor for this team is at least getting in to the postseason when you have those two stars, one inside, one out. Oh, yeah, because that, that pick and roll that they're going to be running all night long is going to be so fun to watch. And as you know, 36 games, 36 games on national TV. So the bright lights will be there for both of them. Chris Hassel, thanks so much, man.
Yeah, 20 of them on uh, CBS properties right. as well. Eight on broadcast, 12 on CBS Sports Network. Can't wait to, to cover this league a lot more. As, as I said, I, I fully admit to it. I was a, a women's college basketball guy. I've, I've never been a huge WNBA person. This is going to get a lot more eyeballs, a lot more people into the WNBA, not just Caitlin, but the, the Angel Reese's, the Cameron Brinks as well. This is going to be by far the most watched season in WNBA history, and I can't wait to cover it. Yeah, and hopefully it's not just a moment, but it's become it's going mm -hmm. to become a movement. Chris Hassel bringing it down for us as Caitlin Clark goes number one overall. And as he mentioned, we've got 20 games on CBS Sports throughout the 2024 season where all these stars, the rookies, are going to be going head-to-head. -head. You want drama, you want robberies, you're going to get it this year and beyond, baby. And breaking news, Cameron Brink, the star forward out of Stanford, goes number two overall to the L.A. Sparks. She is the fourth Stanford player drafted in the top three and first since Janae Gumake in 2014. Brink was lights out this year for the Cardinals. Won Pac-12 Player of the Year. It was a 2024 Naismith Defensive Player of the Year. Also a two-time Pac-12 Player of the Year. And racked up four Pac-12 regular season titles. Not bad. And, oh, by the way, she won a national title when she was a young blood in 2021. You guys are, you know, essentially the two who believe you can make it to back-to-back -back Final Fours. Yeah, I think uh, the biggest thing is, like, I vividly remember Coach Bluter, like, coming and doing my home visit um, in my house during my recruiting. It was at the end of my junior year, I believe, or maybe the beginning of my junior year, around sometime in my junior year, end of my junior year. And I think the biggest thing is, like, we talked about this moment. We dreamed of this moment, but she also believed I would be here, and she coached me really hard to get to this moment. There was a lot of ups and downs. Um, and something I really appreciate about Coach Bluter is, like, no matter what awards or success or wins we ever had or I had is, like, she never stopped coaching me she never stopped holding me accountable um she always thought there was ways for me to get better I know she still thinks that um and I still think that and that's one of the things I just love about her is like first of all she believed I would be here from the day I committed to her even before that when I was in eighth grade but also um she pushed me really hard uh, to make me as good as I am thanks Caitlin the center to your left in the second row yep. hi Jennifer Porti from Let's Talk Woman in Basketball which player are you looking forward to playing with or against this season? Definitely Aaliyah Boston. Come on now. Um, and I think also Erica Wheeler, like a, a vet, somebody that's been in the league a long time, somebody that is in the organization, has been in the league, understands what it's about, somebody that I can lean on. Um, you know, I'm 22 years old, and um, I don't have all the answers in the world. This is something new to me. This is a new challenge, um, and that's something I'm excited for. But having those type of people around me uh, to lean on and, and ask questions or – when things get hard uh, to be there for me. So I think, you know, those two for sure. Yeah. Uh, third, Caitlin, third row center. Caitlin, Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. Uh, two questions. First, you've had a whirlwind and a long season. Are you glad that this part of it is over and that you can kind of focus on being a WNBA rookie? And also, too, you mentioned that you know Aaliyah. What has your relationship been like, and what are you most looking forward to playing, most looking forward about to playing with her? Yeah, I think the, you know, obviously the course of the last few weeks has been pretty insane um, in my life. You know, the last two months, you know, playing basketball as long as I possibly could in my college career, and then went home for a couple of days. I got off the plane when we landed in Iowa City. I drove directly back home, had my mom cook me a meal, and then I drove back to Iowa City the next day. Um, we had our celebration, and then I flew to L.A., flew to New York, and now I'm here sitting at this stage. But um, um, I think the biggest thing is like I'm just very lucky to be in this moment and all these opportunities and these things they're once in a lifetime um, and when, when things might get you know tiring or you know you have to do stuff I think it, the biggest thing is to look at it is just like an opportunity um, this isn't something everybody gets to do um, it's once in a lifetime and just trying to soak in every single experience because um, I know how quick of a turnaround it is and I have a lot of people helping me and then Obviously, Aaliyah Boston, I mean, there's so much you can say about her rookie of the year. Um, in my eyes, one of the best players in the league. Um, and like I said, like as a point guard, like my biggest job is like, I'm just feeding Aaliyah the ball every single game. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in there and be like, hey, go make a layup. <laughs> she's going to make my life easy. Um, but she's incredible. But the thing about I love about her is like she's just a great person. Like she loves the game. She knows the game. She supports the game. Um, 
and she has a smile that affects a lot of people and brings a lot of joy to people when they watch her. So I can't wait to be her teammate again. Uh, Caitlin, in the center section, the last row to your right. Hey, Caitlin, Dylan Manfred from Sportico. Uh, just curious about, you know, all the sponsorships you've had and all the NIL deals. How do you plan to maximize this business opportunity now that you are a professional basketball player in the WNBA? How do you plan to carry that on? And also, what has been the biggest piece of business advice that somebody has given you uh, going into this next phase in your basketball career? Honestly, like, if I'm being completely honest, I feel like it doesn't change a ton from how I live my life over the course of the last year. Um, sponsorships stay the same. Uh, the people around me, you know, agents and whatnot have been able to help me and guide me through the course of the last year. And I don't know if I would be in this moment if it wasn't for a lot of them. And my mom has done a lot. My dad has done a lot. Um, so I think that's just the biggest thing of, you know, the advice I would say is just like lean on the people around you. Like I don't have to do every single thing. And I think at the same time, like in college, I always said like my main focus is on basketball. That's why I've had every other opportunity in my life is because of the way I carry myself, the way I play the game. Um, and going into my professional career, I plan to do the same exact thing is like my focus is solely on basketball. Um, you know, being the best I can. I don't have to do school anymore. That's pretty exciting. I do have to get my degree. I graduate on May 14th. But other than that, um, you know, my 110% focus is on basketball. And, you know, when I do that really well and carry myself really well, everything kind of just takes care of itself. Uh, Caitlin, staying in the center center section, the last row right in front of the screen. Hey, Caitlin, uh, you made the morning with the New York Times. Um, how is the filming event for the ESPN documentary um, with uh, uh, Omaha? And, like, do you think that'll help get people to watch the WNBA more, to get, like, behind-the-scenes look? Absolutely. And uh, you know, I'm actually an executive producer on the show, which has been kind of fun for myself. And when Peyton Manning reached out, obviously, it's his production company. I was a little skeptical at first, but I was like, I don't know if I really want to let people into my life like that. I've never really done it. But um, the way this year has unfolded, the way... Um, you know, obviously Camilla and Kiki, the seasons that they had, I mean, you can't script it any better. It's been absolutely incredible for women's basketball. And if you're a women's basketball fan or you're not a women's basketball fan, I encourage you to watch the show when it comes out. I've seen bits and pieces. It's absolutely amazing. Um, it really allows you to understand the student athlete for way more than just a basketball player. And I think that's really important. I think that's going to allow, um, you know, fans of the W, fans of college to really, you know, understand what they go through, but love them even more for who they are and what they do and what they're about. So um, I'm excited for everybody to see it. And it's been a special project. Uh, Caitlin, to your right, second row, all the way to the right. Hi, Caitlin, Alexa, Phil, who, yes, fan, congratulations. Uh, the Fever haven't been to the postseason since Tamika Catchings was on the team. You've had some time to think about what your role could be like in, in Indiana. How important or how excited are you about the prospect of, of hopefully getting the Fever back into the playoffs with this young core that you're building around? Yeah, absolutely. And that's definitely our goal is to get back to championship habits. And I think... It's so cool for me. Like I vividly remember um, my freshman year during the bubble, we played Kentucky in the round of 32 and Tamika was on the game and I was like tweaking out. Like I couldn't believe she was calling one of my games, like Sierra. somebody I idolized, um, somebody that I loved and somebody that is not only a great basketball player and everything that she did, but she's a tremendous person. Um, and I just think that speaks to the organization as a whole and everything they do is so first class. And I'm very lucky to be, be going there uh, to an organization that really loves women's basketball. I mean, you see it today. I think they had 17,000 tickets claimed to just watch the draft. I think that shows the excitement in Indianapolis. Um, it's a great basketball city. Obviously, what the Pacers have been able to do this year is special in the playoffs. And, um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm just excited. And like you said, there's a lot of young talent on the team. And, you know, just getting back to the playoffs and doing everything we can to win a lot of basketball games is certainly the goal. Caitlin, to your left in the first row. I share Taylor, New York Beacon. Congratulations. Thanks. Can you take us through the emotions of being the number one all-time scorer in the NCAA to the emotions you felt when you heard your name called today? Yeah, honestly, like, I feel like this was definitely a little bit more emotional for me. And I think that's because, like, when you're in the heat of competition, like, you don't have time to, like, really feel your emotions. Like, you're so competitive and you're so fiery. Like, you're not really worried about all that. And I think that was, like, the biggest thing through my career is, like, First of all, I was able to have a lot of closure in the way my career ended and uh, everything that was that I was able to do. Obviously, I played the maximum number of games I could play my senior year, and obviously we didn't win, but, um, you know, I feel like you did everything you can uh, to be in that moment and compete as hard as you can. But when, you know, 
when you're kind of just sitting at a table waiting for your name to be called. I think that really allows the emotions to feed you and you're with your family. Like obviously playing a basketball game, I'm not out there with my family. So sharing that moment with them and, and enjoying it and people that have really had my back and believed in me more than anyone is, is super special. All right, for our last question, we're going to turn to Zoom. Jeff Linder. Kaylin Clark soaking it all in as she is not even hours after being named the number one overall pick to the Fever. Here's a look at recent number one overall picks in the WNBA draft. So, Leah Boston last year, Ryan Howard with the Dream, Charlie Collier with the Wings. He had Oregon star Sabrina Ionescu, Nescu, excuse me, who came out lights out out of college with the Liberty, then Jackie Young, Asia Wilson, and Kelsey Plum, all with the Aces. Remember, when the Aces drafted Kelsey Plum, they were in San Antonio, but then they moved after that, so that's why you see the stars there. But hey, a lot of great names and talents on this list. And up next, you know, we're giving all the ladies a spotlight on this night as Cameron Brink Speaks to the media, and she's now in the WNBA, headed to L.A.